All right. As you said, I'm Nick Benvenuti. I'm VP of Product Line Manager at Siena for the Converge Packet Optical Division. I'm going to talk to you about purpose-built routers for IP optical convergence. Customers are talking about, to us about optical IP convergence, and they want a balanced approach in this conversation. They're struggling with a lot of concerns, all the way from IP capabilities in the router, integration of DWM, multi-layer convergence, as well as management. And they're really worried about the thermals and the power used, as we noticed in the previous presentation. The architecture that they're building this network on is a photonic network underneath. They're looking to integrate those DWM capabilities into the router and have a SDN controller to manage the IP, the optical, and the photonics in a multi-layer environment. They need to streamline their operations to drive efficiencies and to deal with an aging population. The next piece they're looking for is I need to do this in a linear fashion. I need to be able to grow this network. I need to understand the implications of bringing DWM and IP technologies together. And it's not as easy as a rudder in a port. So we need to look at what it means when we integrate these capabilities together, and we need to protect ourselves for future deployments. We need to deploy what's needed today, and we need a scalable architecture that lets us deploy incremental capacity tomorrow to drive the efficiencies they're looking for to match their business models. Fundamentally, what they're telling us is they need simplicity, they need scalability, and they need sustainability. And that's the focus of our presentation here of how do we build a converged IP optical router to streamline the implementation to the business model. So there are a number of architectures that are out there, and they have unconscious biases against them. Right? The first architecture we pick is the mainstay in the industry today is chassis-based solutions come at different sizes. A great architecture lasted us for many years. There are struggles with this architecture as we start to integrate optics capabilities, and there's trade-offs around scale and making the wrong decisions up front. And we'll articulate what those look like for you. The next architecture that's come out is a DDC architecture, where we use a distributed or a virtual backplane. It has benefits to deal with scale and to increase scale over time, but operationally it wasn't well thought out. And so we would look to provide a much cleaner solution when it comes to a distributed uh, DDC architecture. The last architecture that we've seen is spine leaf. It was used to scale the network to much larger capacities than was traditionally possible in chassis uh, solutions, but now it's kind of caught up and we can scale equally well. It was originally for data centers, created a great buzz, but there's other architectures that are better now that we can use. And so if we look at it, we're looking for what combination of these architectures can build the biggest IP optical aggregation node that scales efficiently and that introduces technology at the cadence of technology development. So when you integrate IP and optical, there are four things that nobody wants to talk about. First one is thermal flexibility. The other one's scale of resources, specifically compute, DWM integration or robust DWM integration, and extensible fabric. Which architecture best suits this? I would say it's a hybrid of the architectures I showed you. Why do customers want this? Because they're looking for sustainability to match their business model. And sustainability is power, but it's also removing those hidden costs as we migrate technology and incurring those or avoiding those incremental costs that I'm going to show you in the next few charts. That reduces their overall TCO and focuses their ROI into the positive territory. And so if we're going to build a router to deal with IP optical convergence, we should redesign the router to do that, and we should optimize the router to do that. We shouldn't be stuck with traditional form factors. So let's talk about some of those constraints. A central office, the backbone of every network. Forget about all the equipment. This is the place where the equipment goes. Optimized for even power distribution and even thermal load across all the racks in the office. As we integrate more and more and we make these devices denser, we create hot pockets. And those hot pockets are inefficient in CO environments. And as you scale bigger and bigger, and you add DWM capabilities into the device, you create an even bigger hot pocket. How do you deal with that? Lower capacity, but that goes against the scale argument we want to make. Use or retrofit the office for incremental cooling capacity. That's, that hits ROI. That's not a good option, and I haven't met a carrier yet or a service provider yet that wants to go retrofit their facilities. Last, use alternate cooling methods. Great option. Again, it hits the ROI of the customer. So we need to focus this in a different direction. 
So we're going to break down the cooling and thermal capacities for a router node. And this is a chart that nobody's going to show you. I'll be the first one to show you this chart. So if you look at the router instance, the management, the fabric, low power, the line modules make up the bulk of the power, and then the cooling, the fans, because it's forced air cool, makes up a big chunk of power. And so as you increase the capabilities of the router, it runs a little bit hotter, draws more, more power for the fans, and creates a, more, a bigger thermal load. What nobody tells you when you insert a pluggable coherent optic into the router is it increases the thermal density of that site massively. It almost doubles it, depending on the size of the router, if you populate in every port. Right? Now let's compare that against the thermal loading that most of our carriers have to deal with. So those red lines kind of define the range that we can cool in our current COs. Okay? The bigger device, the lower those red lines will move. Okay? So that fundamentally says, as dense as our router is, we're not going to be able to cool it in that location. We're going to have to leave adjacent racks empty. The denser you get, you eventually get to an apex where you can no longer cool it because you've generated too much heat of one area. So I'm going to challenge the industry to say there has to be a new metric, thermal density, because sustainability matters here. I need to be able to put this in my CEOs. I don't want to retrofit my CEOs. So thermal density matters. My friends will tell me that port density matters. And it's true, port density does matter. But when you include DWM in that port density equation, it's going to blow your metric on thermal density. So you're now trading off port density against thermals. And so if you're going to do that, and you need to scale, you need to think in a more distributed architecture where I can put power in various racks and distribute it evenly through the CO so that I can leverage that CO infrastructure. And so I need to think of how I grow across racks instead of within a rack. So density is great, but it's a big penalty when it comes to thermals and deployments in our customer's environment. So we need to think differently. Our customers demand that we think differently. Next one is, how do we scale the fabric? Directly relates to the previous question, right? Day one, we don't know how big that fabric needs to be. We showed you various size chassis. You're going to pick one. You're going to put it in that location. If it scales too large, you're going to have to figure out how to scale that device, right? And so there are three models. So there are two models today. I'm going to propose a third model. The first model is the reinvest model. Second is the back-to-back -back model. And the third is the augment model, OK? So in the reinvest model, you take a terabit router, and you're going to replace the line modules and the, and the fabrics, and you're going to increment that to the next generation of technology, right? Still one router instance. We have to do this in certain locations today because there's no other scale option. But when we integrate DWM into that device, we not only have to replace the routers, we have to replace all the capacity at the DWM layer. So in a traditional model where the transponders were separate and the, D and the routers were another model, you could upgrade them independently. But once you converge them, every time you upgrade capacity on your router, you're going to have to replace not only the router ports, but the DWM ports, right? Because you're not going to upgrade to an 800 gig port and use a 400 gig plug anymore. The next option we see is what we call the back-to-back -back option, where I take a terabit router and I interconnect it to another terabit router of equal size or slightly larger, and I connect it over client ports. So I've taken that infrastructure, I'm trying to make it bigger, but I've created two routers where there used to be one, and I've limited the connectivity between those two routers. Right? And so it's not optimal, and the data path that traverses those two routers hits many more chips and consumes much more power than it really should. Because I'm going ingress card to fabric to, to egress card, ingress fabric to, to ingress card to e fabric to egress card on the next device. So I'm incurring an economical penalty that's not factored in any RFP time and impacts sustainability and ROI for the customer. So what's the answer? The answer is I want to leverage the infrastructure that already exists. I want to be able to put a router out there, pick whatever size you want. I want to be able to add fabrics and add line cards in service leverage the previous install base and expand that to create one bigger router instance. And I want to be able to do that multiple times. I want a linear curve that aligns with the customer's business model that allows me to deploy traffic as needed and incur those costs as needed and monetize those costs as needed. This architecture allows us to do that. Customers are asking for more from us. They're asking us to align to their business model and improve their ROI and their sustainability. 
these two topics that I just talked about hit their sustainability, right? It's not, like I said, it's not factored in the RFP, but it's there and it's a cost that they incur. And it's a cost they should not incur and we should do better. Next is compute. So as a router scales, we typically add more and more compute. And that compute is typically a rip and replace. So day one, we want to put the least amount of compute possible for the application they want. And as we scale the device, we want to be able to add compute and cluster it together to work in a seamless environment. Now, what drives compute? APIs drive compute, right? A lot more interaction with the network element, a lot more direct interaction exchanging of information between the network element and the management systems or the SDN controllers. The frequency of which we retrieve that data is also important. And the more we retrieve it, the bigger the data is, the more compute and the more processing power it's going to take. Next is intelligent applications. They're going to draw even more data. Some applications we virtualized from a router perspective. We can run them in the cloud, but we're also talking about running them back on the hardware in an abstracted form. And so below are a couple of examples that says to us, you know, these are things that are going to impact compute resources, and we want them to be scalable in the same way we want the fabrics to be scalable and the system to be scalable. And so we want to be able to deploy incremental compute, not impact the density of the architecture, leverage the asset that's already in place, i.e. the compute that's already in place, by augmenting compute and allowing our software to run over a compute cluster within the node itself. That's a more streamlined model that aligns to our customer's business. Last but not least, the DWM. So the cycle for innovation on the technologies that we're talking about and those technologies integration into our customers on a line system perspective is roughly every 10 years. When it comes to DWM technology, we're seeing innovation every two years. And when it comes to host platforms, it's roughly every four to five years. So the first thing customers tell me when they see this chart is there's a misalignment, right? There's a misalignment that I can leverage today. Because I'm a transponder-based platform and a router-based platform, I can, I can grow them independently and I can adapt the technology myself. But once I integrate DWM into the router, I lose that ability. And so what customers have asked us is, how do I leverage multi-generational DWM technology into the router? Because the cadence of DWM technology increases every two years or changes every two years, and the host is not the reason, or I don't want the host to be changing at the same pace because I can't consume it that fast. And so upgrading the host cannot be the answer of how to in integrate DWM into the router. So we're looking for an abstraction layer between the DWM interface and the router that allows us to marry those two things in the same way we do with transponders and routers today, but integrated into the same device this time. Now, when we integrate DWM, there's other aspects that we need to consider, which is cost, and we need to determine spectral efficiency or look at spectral efficiency. So to give you an example, when everybody says that 400 gig plugs will do everything, here's what it looks like. We have 64 carriers at 400 gig. We put a 400 gig port into the router. We've optimized the port. We've optimized the plug. And let's call a space spade. We probably optimized the, the fiber as well. But if the performance doesn't match, and I need to degrade that to 300 gig, now I'm taking across the board 25% penalty. That says the router port is now running at 300 gig, so it's 25% of an asset that's been lost. The plug that I paid for for 400 gig, I got to run at 300 gig. There's 25% of that asset that I just threw away. And then the fiber, I've degraded the capacity of the fiber because the spectral width is the same for 300 gig as it is for 400 gig. I've degraded the fiber utilization by 25%. I don't know about you, but that's a big sustainability issue for me. 25% right, reduction across the board on my assets is not well, is not, does not sit well with me. If I have to degrade to, 50, to 200 gig, that's a 50% hit. And so where DWM integration makes sense is when I can match the Ethernet or the IP port to the DWM technology to the performance. And if all three of those things match, I have a perfect fit. Whenever I have a a disassociation, I take a massive penalty, and I mean massive penalty in terms of sustainability. Okay, so we got to factor this into our next generation routers, and we need to make sure that we keep this equation top of mind. Next is IP and optical convergence together. So if I look at Sienna's philosophy, I want to build a purpose-built router that scales both on the data path, the compute, and the OAM path. I want to integrate best-in-breed DWM in various generations over that life cycle. 
I want to put that on an enhanced photonic network that gives me optimal performance for that DWM. When I've done that, I've addressed three big cost centers for my customer. I'm going to tie that together to simplify the network by putting an SDN controller on top that can plan, manage, and control that network, not at the individual layers, but also at the converged layer, so that I can make troubleshooting, planning decisions, and articulate the solution much more cleanly to the operations team. So I'm going to leave you with a few takeaway points. Number one, and it's going to be controversial, is when you're designing a router, you have to give equal consideration to IP and optical influences. And you've got to design it for both at the same time. You cannot design it for IP and back your way into, uh, into optical. You can't design for optical and back your way into IP. Insufficient or inefficient hardware designs will compromise our customers' business and sustainability aspirations. I've showed you three examples today of how that can happen really quickly. Flexible platforms should be aligned to meet your customers' business goals. If they're not aligned with your customers' business goals, then you're selling them a dream. Right? You have to align their, your delivery and your pay structure and your cost structure to their business model. And last but not least, we have to simplify planning, management, and operations so that it's a multi-layer environment. That will reduce the operational aspects of managing the network. And so we at Siena have looked at all this, and we believe we built the industry's first optimized IP optical coherent router. And if you want to visit us at our booth, we're happy to share our wave router story with you and share the convergence as it's properly meant to be. All right, thank you.